Why is quality time important? Without having any quality time, relationships can easily deteriorate. And in our vertical relationship with God, God's love for us is always constant, but our love for Him is not. We are always and can be easily distracted by the cares and the things in our world which might lead us away from the full experience of God's love. And our only ability to remain in God's love is to spend time and have intimacy with Him. Scripture tells us, Do not love the world, nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. It simply says, When you are found loving the world, and your heart is captured by the things in the world, it means the love of the Father is not in you. This place is where you need to spend quality time with God to increase your intimacy and connection with God. You can check out my last video which I spoke broadly about quality time and its importance to us as believers. And in this video, I want to speak about the practical tips for us to be able to spend quality time with God. Number one, seek God early. In context of this, there's no perfect time for us to spend quality time with God individually. It could be that your schedule do not give you your morning and it can only give you your evening. So based on your schedule, it is best understood by you when you would have an undivided attention and time to spend with God. Seeking God early could then be in two forms. The first, you waking up before daylight to spend time with God. And secondly, it could be about the idea of you earnestly seeking Him, which is with sincerity and heartfelt love for Him. The psalmist said, O God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. And in the Passion's translation it said, O God of my life, I'm love sick for you in this weary wilderness. I thirst with the deepest longings to love you more, with cravings in my heart that can't be described. Such yearning grips my soul for you, my God. Jesus woke up in the morning before daylight to give himself to The Bible says the next morning Jesus got up long before daylight, left the house while it was dark, and made his way to a secluded place to give himself to prayer. It is that phrase that I love so much. He gave himself to prayer, which shows us the intentionality that's involved in spending quality time with God. It shouldn't come from a place of routine and completing your to-do list in the morning. It should come from a place of you wanting to feed from God, to allow God to fill you, not from a place of to-do list or routine. So before our busyness would choke us up in the morning, could you spend time to wake up early to seek Him? Or if your time does not allow you to spend time with Him early in the morning, can you do it at evening before you sleep? A quality time where your attention is undivided. Why is it important that we daily try to seek God and spend quality time with Him? The Bible says that God wants to load us with benefits each day. He wants to help us carry our burdens. He wants to help us carry the load and the care that we have in life. Blessed be the Lord who daily loaded us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. So God is always ready to load us with benefits, to help us with our troubles, to help us with the schedules that we might even have and we think we don't need him to do it. And the only thing he needs is let's work together as friends. Can you invite me into your day? And the Lord's Prayer, this line says, give us this day our daily bread. But if you don't go to him, are you going to receive that daily bread? If you don't go to him, that daily needful food you need for the day, the encouragement, the inspiration, the motivation you need for that day, will you go to collect it? Number two tip, don't wait till you feel it. Seize every opportunity. Sometimes we wait till we feel the need to pray before we pray or till we feel the need to study or worship before we do that. Your feeling should not be the deciding factor for you to spend quality time with God. You don't wait to feel it. Because some days you wake up and not even feel like praying, but that is the time you need to pray the more. Some days you wake up and not feel like reaching out to God because you are clouded with your emotions. That's the time you need to go to Him. The time that you feel like you don't need to talk to Him the most is the time you need Him the most. He says is the nearest helper in our time of trouble. So why should you and I be trying to run away from the person who would help us in our time of trouble? How unwise. Is that to us? And scripture tells us, So be very careful how you live, not being like those with no understanding, but live honorably with true wisdom, for we are living in evil days. 
take full advantage of every day as you spend your life for his purposes. There is a purpose attached to your life and mine and we cannot fulfill this purpose here on this earth unless we align with him and get to know his heart because quality time with him will lead us to know his heart. It's not a religious routine. It's a heartfelt need for God that I cannot live without you. In you I live, in you I move, in you I have my being. Without you, my essence is not there. Without you, my living is vanity. If you wake up in the middle of the night, instead of picking up your phone to ask who is online for a video call, who is online to chat me up, oh, I cannot sleep, I can't find sleep, use that time. Seize every opportunity. The days are evil. You may not have time. So it's for you to seize every opportunity. You wake up in the night to ease yourself and you come back, you can't sleep. Seize that opportunity. Start engaging with your father. Build that connection with daddy God. Daddy God never sleeps. He never slumbers. He is not going to bed. So you can meet him where he is. Drop your phone someplace and find that time to commune with him till you go back to bed. You're not being religious. You're actually doing what you are supposed to do which is to connect with him and build that intimacy with him. He is not limited by spaces that you find yourself. He is everywhere. So he's not trying to say, why are you talking to me? You are in traffic. No, no, no. That's the best time. Commune with him. Number three, sit together with God to enjoy his company. Remember Mary, the sister of Martha, how she sat at Jesus' feet and it delighted Jesus that she sat there to receive from him. She didn't sit there to ask of him and just say, Jesus, please, I have some need. I have some money need and this and that. But she sat down to hear him speak. So sometimes when you meet God in your quality time, it's not about you asking. It's about you listening. What is your heart towards me? Because I want to know that. And David said in Psalms, one thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. The word dwell there is so beautiful. It speaks about sitting. The posture of sitting is a posture of relaxation, which is when I find myself in the place of spending time with God, whether in worship or in study of the word or in prayer, it's a place for me to relax. It's not a place of performance for me. It's a place for me to calm down. I'm not trying to prove something to God. I'm not trying to show God reasons for him to bless me. I know his heart, he wants to bless me. So what am I to do? Sit and relax and be fed. Sit and relax and hear him. David said that I may gaze upon his beauty. How pleasant he is. How lovely he is. How encouraging his words are to me. Let me sit at his feet. Let me spend time in this place. This one thing is enough. That alone will I seek. That's so beautiful if you get to understand the deep impact of it. Number four, remove the distractions. It is not a casual time. The time you have to spend with God is not like you just waking up in the morning and yawning. Wow. Then you start, oh, Father, thank you for this day. Thank you. Then you just go. Making it look like a routine, a to-do list, which I just take off my morning routine. I just read through my devotional. And you read through the devotional, nothing dropped in you. You did not get the daily bread that it provided. Nothing for you to use to meditate. Nothing for you to build your faith on for that day. No, that's not it. It's not about the time that you want to go to bed and you just yawn as you're going to bed. Father, thank you. Oh, thank you for this night. Not as if those things are bad. Yeah, you can do them. Sometimes you could be tired and you get to just go to bed and then sleep off, pray and sleep off. It's not a religious thing. The quality time you spend with him is a very intentional time. That as you wake up, you plan to wake up earlier than you should. You could set your alarm, wake yourself up, remove the distractions. If you are a nursing mother, if you are a mother with children or a father with children in your house, sometimes you may need to wake up very early when they are not awake to be able to spend some time with God. Because when they are awake, it might be when you are praying, they are distracting you and you might get upset. Or if you are with someone, sometimes you might need to wake up ahead of time to do that. Or when they are asleep in the night, you do your own quality time with God, then go to bed. Whatever works for you, but you need to remove the distractions. Your phone could be a distraction. Other distractions could be your mind. Yourself could be a distraction. Because instead of praying, you might be thinking of other things. Your brain might still be wiring around 
thinking about other things, processing, processing. And that is the place that you need to create an atmosphere whereby you can focus and give him your attention. Scripture says, don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your heart and give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sometimes you may need to just create the atmosphere by singing psalms, hymns and spiritual songs, by making melody to the Lord, just creating the atmosphere to get you in focus. Number five, feed on the love of God and pray in the Holy Ghost. Your time to study is not merely a time to acquire more Bible knowledge. Your time to pray is not merely a time to perform or to try to plead with God or persuade God to do what you need him to do for you. It is a time for fellowship. Your time of study should be a time of bonding and intimacy and connection. You are studying to know his heart. You are studying this word to see Jesus, the Son. Because it is through the Son that you know the Father. He said, without me, no one can know the Father. So your quality time with God is a time whereby you allow his love to wash over you. His love to wash over all the worries, all the fears, all the distractions, all the disruptions in your life, all the things that are troubling you and then you engage in praying in the holy ghost but you my delightfully loved friends constantly and progressively build yourselves up on the foundation of your most holy faith by praying every moment in the spirit fasten your hearts to the love of god and receive the mercy of our lord jesus christ who gives us eternal life the aim is for your intimacy in your relationship with god to increase and deepen it's never about your love for him but it's about you experiencing his love more deeper. It's a daily thing. So every day you wake up, you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Every day you wake up, he still loves you. Whether you failed or you dreamt a bad dream, you had a nightmare, he still loves you. Every time that you go to him should be, let his love wash over you. And then you speak in your most holy faith. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit helps us in our prayer when we don't know what to say. And how does he do that? It's in partnership with us when we speak in the holy ghost when we pray in our most holy faith you can allow yourself to soak in allow him to wash over you it's not about you speaking in the flesh just speaking and then trying to con that to think a prayer point this is not about a prayer point it is the spirit praying and you are participating with the Spirit. You are speaking the language of God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope this has been beneficial to you and practical enough for you to be able to put it to practice. So this is my YouTube channel. I am Uwe Mapan. I would like you to give this video a thumbs up. Share it to other people that will need to see this. Because I know there are people that might need this. And watch the previous video about quality time with God. So that you can have more context on what i've discussed about today leave your comments down in the comment section i would like to hear from you and know what you think about this and how you operate in the practical aspect of your quality time with god on a daily basis thank you and see you in my next youtube video Bye bye